Let's talk about creating a pest resistant environment to protect your cannabis plants naturally. Hey, but before we do, today's video is brought to you by Real Grow Lab. If you want to connect with the best growers from all over the world, get tips and tricks on how to grow the dankest plants possible, and not have to worry about the censorship we get from YouTube, Facebook, and Instagram, go check out realgrowlab.com. Get all kinds of great grow talk Q&A, plus see all the stuff YouTube won't let me show you in these videos. Sign up and join our growing community over at realgrowlab.com or download the app at the Apple or Android App Store. Now let's get back to today's video. All right, I see. Come on, man. I get excited. Let's do it. <laughs> okay. Bugs, I, first of all, let's talk about why you don't want bugs in your grow in the first place. Well, because they suck the life out of your plants. You know, when you think they're either going to bite your plant. Uh, yeah, I am thinking of uh, like a spider mite where they either bite it, you bite your plant or some of them have these little mouth parts where they stick the whatever it is in and suck all the juice out. Well, that juice is your solar panel. That's the guts of your solo pa solar panel, the chloroplast, where the photosynthesis happens. Mm. So when you see a little, you know, a leaf that has, you know, damage, you know, any kind of damage, if it's not green, that thing's not photosynthesizing, it's not doing its job. Then also think about a bunch of needles being stuck in any, you know, in, in a leaf you're gonna get contaminated. It's gonna get infected with something sooner than later. So yeah, you gotta worry about both those things with bugs. Okay, and you've mentioned IPM. I keep thinking it's a government agency yeah. that's gonna knock down my door. IPM, what's that? Integrated Pest Management. And what it may, I have a nursery down in Florida. And when I go to whatever, Nursery Growers and Landscape Association, they always ass assume or they just know that they have pests. There's always pest pressures. So even if they don't are not, not seeing any pests, they already assume that it's going to be a problem. So they're managing it, integrated mm -hmm. pest management. For us indoors, even if we don't have bugs, we still want to manage it, man. We still want to make sure we want to, I'll show you a couple, I'll talk about a couple of things that you want to do. Okay. So let's start off with ways to prevent bugs from getting in, in the first place. And you mentioned cleanliness. Yeah, it's, it's huge. I mean, think about it. You start with a clean environment. You know, how do you get, you know, pathogens, you bring them in from outside. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, start with yourself. You know, I don't go, I have a greenhouse right out here. I don't go in the greenhouse and then go in my uh, indoor grow. I won't go in my indoor grow if I haven't showered in a while, you know, a day or so, you know, I'll go make sure that I showered, put on new, new clothes and uh, then go in the grow. You know, it's important to bugs. You walk across grass to get to your grow shed or wherever. You know, I have a place in the back here. And you get bugs all over your the bottom of your shoes or on your socks. Mm. It's a reality, man. It can be just a, a mold spore or something as well. It doesn't have to be a bug. So make sure that you're not tracking stuff in from outside. Yep. And make sure you're not bringing things in from outside either. I mean, we talk about uh, you know, the scissors, those Fisker scissors that I love. Mm -hmm. I have a separate pair for out in the greenhouse, and I don't bring them back and forth. I don't go in my garage and go grab, you know, scissor or some tool or a watering can. Okay, right. I've seen you have two watering cans, one yeah. for outside, one for inside. Yeah, and I leave the watering can inside the grow when, when I leave. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so just th those kind of, you know, what do they call them? Cultural practices, I guess, best practices. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So we've talked about stuff, hitchhiking from outside, yep. inside. Yep. I know also a lot of people grow from clone nowadays. And yeah. I see you go through a certain practice with your clones when you bring them in. Yeah. That is quarantining. If you don't want to get bugs and you're going to bring clones in from friends or, you know, whatever, there's clone shippers now, you have to quarantine. And that means don't just take this from an an unknown source could have powdery mildew spores and could have spider mites and don't forget you can just put a quick spray on these kill them send them along and you know see what happens seven to ten days later but yeah you got to be really really careful so you have like you keep them separated completely yeah. secluded from the rest of your grow for how long 
I quarantine them. That's the that's the, the nomenclature, sir. Yeah, um, at least three weeks, I would say. Uh, the bugs, yeah, it's not that hard. If you keep them in solo cups, if you get a, a clone, you put it in a solo cup, you cut it back a couple times, you know, 14 days, 21 days, something like that. It depends on the life cycle of the bug. Most life, most bugs have a life cycle anywhere seven to fourteen days, depending on how hot it is. And so you just want to make sure that there's no eggs that they miss that are gonna mm-hmm. are gonna hatch. So, yeah, two three weeks, and you can get a tent. AC Infinity, shout out to them. Uh, they've got like a two foot by three foot tent that you can throw. Uh, I have mine on my wife's side of the walk in closet. <laughs> I'm sure she's happy about that. I'm lying. If I had any <laughs> guts, I would put it on my side. You know, I'm growing <laughs> weed in here. But keeping it quarantined Separate. for two, three weeks, yeah. that gives you a, an idea if the plant's safe to move into your regular growth space. Yep, yep. And like I said, you don't have to get a big tent. It doesn't have to be complicated. Uh, it can just be keeping the solo cups under not that much light. Mm-hmm. Okay. Hey, I see. Do you mind if I just give a fun fact really quick? Something yeah. I learned that I think is important is that when you are cleaning, when you're cleaning your tools or making sure you don't cross contaminate to get bugs or specifically powdery mildew or mold spores, use bleach. Use a 10% bleach solution as opposed to using like alcohol, you know, isopropyl alcohol a lot of people would clean their tools with. Uh, bleach is more effective. It will kill some, they have like these viroids that are really resistant to, you know, they're hard to kill. Mm-hmm. And bleach is an, a really powerful oxidizer that will do that. So I'm thinking if you brought in a clone that might have something, making sure you bleach your scissors before you cut another plant is a good way to keep yourself protected. Yeah, I thought you were trolling me. You were going to tell me you were going to bleach the clone. <laughs> I was like, no, no. <laughs> okay, so let's, let's move on to the next one, environment. I hear you yeah. rail on about how important environment is. How do I manage my environment to keep pests, make it not inviting to them? Well, first off, you grow strong, healthy plants, which means you want to be in your VPD zone. You want to have the ideal temperature and humidity. Mm -hmm. So stronger plants have strong, big, thick cell walls. They also are developing lots of secondary metabolites that are flexing for it. Like, yo, you don't mess with me, man. You know, nature attacks the weak. I'm thinking about growing up in LA. We had a lot of Uh, stick-up kids. And the stick-up kids would target people that looked weak, target people that looked like they weren't paying attention. But if you look like you came out of a gym, you wouldn't get targeted. Sounds Yeah, sounds about right. It trickles down to bugs as well. But uh, yeah, so growing strong, healthy plants in a really good environment and then making the environment not so inviting for the bugs. Bugs mm. like, uh, you know, we talk about that VPD guide. Well, bugs like it hot. They like it hotter than the plants will. And then at 90 degrees, I think it's like three times the amount. I mean, they're being born twice as fast. It doubles their life cycle the faster, the higher up uh, temperatures it gets, mm-hmm. right up to about 90 degrees. And if you think about your plant, in 90 degrees they're stressing like crazy right Mm -hmm. so 90 degrees is great for bugs and it makes weak plants and so your whole grow is just going to get consumed yeah i mean think about it your plants are stressing out the bugs are flexing that's exactly the recipe that we don't want so it's it's kind of like finding a good environment for your plants that's also a bad environment for the bugs yeah and look up vpd i mean they they figured it out man they figured out the right temperature and humidity so the plant is always exhausting a little bit you know it's it's sucking up uh you know water and nutrients through its stomata through its roots and out the stomata and those secondary metabolites are being carried with it and it's sending these signals Mm -hmm. signals for the bugs to stay away yes and i'm strong man go somewhere else man it's in a good spot for you you're gonna be chewing for a while trying to get into this cell wall homie okay so i feel like i've got a good handle on how to keep bugs out but you mentioned you just got to assume assume that even if you do all of that stuff, you're still going to run into the problem once in a while? Maybe. You sure want to know. You'd want to nip it in the bud if you did, right? Mm-hmm. So how do you how do you monitor and, and make sure, keep that in check? You got to scout, sir. You got to scout. That sounds more official than it is. It's pretty fun. I mean, just getting high and going in your grow with your little jeweler's loop and looking all around. So when I'm scouting, I'm looking on the underside of the leaves. I'm looking where the leaf meets the, uh, you know, the stem. I'm looking where the stem meets the plant i'm looking where the plant meets the roots 
So all there, I'm just kind of hanging out. I'm looking at a lot of the plants. I'm looking at inside. I'm watching the airflow, seeing, you know, if you got a bunch of airflow, the bugs don't like to hang out there. You know, so I'm making sure my fans aren't missing spots. I'm making sure that there's nothing that's too bushy so that air can't get in there. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the scouting is what I call it. And I've noticed you have these like fly strip looking things hanging in your grow as well. Yep. Yeah. Part of scouting is you keep uh, these sticky traps. They're these yellow and blue sticky traps. The yellow ones are for spider mites and more generalist. The blue ones are good to attract thrips. And I'm just going and taking a look and I'm evaluating. I'm really counting on there. A lot of times I'll take a picture and compare it last week to this week because I don't, I don't change them every week. Mm -hmm. But I'm taking a look and I'm counting on there. They have these little squares that make it really easy to count. You know, I see like, all right. Yeah, they're like in a grid pattern. Yeah, so you can just count the ones. And you can add up the grids if you want because it's pretty hard to take a big sheet of, you know, sticky paper and start counting bugs. That's pretty cool, man. So that's how you know, by the way, it's keeping score. Even if you do have, like I have fungus gnats or had fungus gnats and uh, I was able to beat them with the sticky traps and you can keep score. You can be like, hey, wait a minute, there was 30 on there in a week, you know, the first week. And now there's eight on there the second week and I get two every now and again, you know, or one. All right, so I did everything I could. Right. I, I practiced everything I should. I still got some bugs and so let's talk about how to get rid of them if you've got them. Sure, sure. I mean, we all know the easiest one is let's spray something on them, right? Ooh, I think about our food supply, and it makes me gross to think about spraying yeah. stuff that I'm going to consume. Yeah, they do spray a lot of weird stuff. But <laughs> I tell you what, so they spray, you know, because there's a free market, and a lot of times there's nobody looking. Mm -hmm. uh, shady growers used to spray, or probably a few of them still do, some really nasty chemicals on their, their plants, and it will fix the problem but it will also really make you sick and make people sick. So Fluoramite, uh, Eagle 20, uh, thinking Avid, those type of things, those are meant ornamental crops. You'll see it says for ornamental use only. Those are the plants that you, the shrubs you're gonna plant from Home Depot. Uh, those guys are able to spray once every two months with a super powerful systemic Fertile, uh, systemic pesticide, meaning it gets in the vascular system of it's the plant. It's inside. The plant absorbs it's it. It's a part of the plant. And okay. You would never want to do that with cannabis because you are going to combust it. Not only going to eat, like eating it is one thing that's bad enough, but combusting it and inhaling it directly into your lungs, which goes directly into your bloodstream. And it's super shady. Some of the things, Eagle 20 turns into cyanide, bro. Mm, don't want to be smoking that. <laughs> it, I mean, people go to the hospital from it. You know, mm -hmm. it's really a big deal. So that was systemic. You said there was another kind. Yeah, contact. So it's systemic are the ones, yeah, it's too good to be true. You spray it on one and the bugs never come back, but it's because it's that bad of a poison. Uh, contact is kind of keeping you honest. Those are things like horticultural oils, uh, neem, azadiractin, spinosad. Uh, these are things that, uh, like, uh, I'm thinking like the horticultural oils, they uh, just clog up the pipes, the breathing pipes of the bugs. Mm -hmm. So they're basically smothering them. Uh, there's like the uh, insecticidal soaps that will melt the exoskeleton off of the bugs, man, you know? <laughs> but those, they just go on the top of the plant. They don't get yep. absorbed into the plant. Yep. And there's uh, spinosad and uh, what's the other one I'm thinking of? Oh, Azadiractin is like an extract of neem. Uh, the bugs eat that and they just they don't eat anymore they just lose their appetite and they die so these are cool natural uh, yeah, yeah natural pesticides i guess for lack of a better word and then i've actually seen you deliberately add bugs to your grow what's going on there yeah i add the meat eaters man mm. beneficial predators and beneficial predators are so cool google them uh they're meat eating bugs they're bugs that eat other bugs the bugs that we're trying to eradicate are the vegetarians those are the ones that are eating you know sucking the sap and, and the life out of the plants there are bugs, you know, na nature's amazing, man. It's absolutely amazing uh, that will eat those bugs. So in everything, you know, you keep everything in balance. So by adding beneficial predators, meat-eating bugs, uh, you can control the population. It's, 
It's amazing. So the first one that comes to mind, and I've never seen you use this, but I've heard people talk mm-hmm. about ladybugs. Yeah, ladybugs are great. Everybody knows ladybugs eat other bugs, right? Mm-hmm. But you don't use them. Why? No, nah, because they like the light. They're very attracted to the light. I used to, oh. I've tried them. I bought a thousand ladybugs one time, released them into my grow, and they all went right into the HPS light and died. Okay. Yeah. So what do you use instead? You know what? Uh, the one that I really have extensive knowledge with is I used to get spider mites a lot. Mm -hmm. and uh uh prosimilis prosimilis i by the way i didn't have the perfect environment it was hot and it was dry the spider mites went nuts uh but i was able to knock them down and then put prosimilis on there and these are you know spider mite killers and uh, Mm -hmm. man works amazing absolutely amazing so out of all of the stuff that we talked about today, it seems like environment is one of those key things, making Absolutely. a great environment for your plants, an uninviting environment for the type of bugs that eat plants. Yep, and that's tied with cleanliness. You know, those two are key. But that is how I keep my grow bug free. Uh, but what about you? Did I miss something? Let me know in the comments. And if you dug this video, please hit that like button, smash that subscribe button. Share this video with another grower you know and check out the other couple videos YouTube is recommending. I think you'll dig them.